Once again, the contract must have a consideration. This is the purchase price inside of that offer. You are willing to take ownership of the property as the buyer for $200,000. There, It must have voluntary consent. It must have a mutual meeting of the minds. Remember, you cannot force someone into consenting. Now, you could also be harassed into consention. So as a listing agent, please be careful and watch for this because I have seen this several times where you go to list a house for like an elderly person, you know, and the son is there with them and they're like, come on, mom, you know, you got to go into the nursing home. So go ahead and sell sign that listing, let's sell the property and move you out. And she sells the property or she signs the listing agreement that could be under duress, which would violate the consent. And potentially she could call you later and go, Hey, I don't want to list that property. I was forced into it or coerced, or I didn't want to upset my son. I've seen this happen. Okay. Must be for a legal purpose. Obviously, you cannot write a uh, contract for love. That's a whole separate penalty, all right? <laughs> um, must be legally competent parties. Those are all the requirements for that offer that will be either accepted, rejected, or countered, okay? Now, that contract that comes over that we call an offer from the offer or, which is the buyer, I hope in your career is a valid contract. What did I do here? I hope is a valid contract, meaning all parts are in place and everything is enforceable. I wish that upon you. However, there are two other words right here that I want to talk about. And I'm going to trick one of you on the exam. So make sure you understand the difference here. A void contract actually is a misnomer because if it's void, it never was a contract to begin with. A void contract is missing one of the elements. It is completely missing one. So let's go back. If I said, I will wash your car today, yes or no, do you agree? And you said, yes, I agree. That is a void contract, meaning it's missing one of the elements. Which one was it? Think about it. I will wash your car today, yes or no, and they agree. We did not even consider, well, consider is not a good word because that's the answer. We did not even discuss consideration. It was missing one of the elements. It is void. It never was a contract because it did not have all five parts involved. All right. That is a void. And they use the word void contract, but it's kind of a misnomer because the word contract is really not true. It's not even a contract because it doesn't meet all the parts. Now, contrast that with this next word, voidable. A contract could be voidable. A voidable contract appears to be valid, but upon inspection, one of the five elements is defective, okay? So we mentioned this contract that happened years ago between the Anna Nicole Smith lawsuit and the old man wrote the codicil that changed his contract to give Anna Nicole Smith all the money. And the old man's boy said that contract should be undone because the legal competency was not there. He was out of his mind. He was crazy. He was high on drugs. 
Therefore, that contract that appears valid can actually be disaffirmed or set aside or voided by a court because of some legal principle. Another example could be, I send you all over an offer from my investment company and on the purchase agreement, and it's signed by Sean Modulin, who is my youngest son, and he is the vice president of my investment company. You look at it and you go, well, this contract looks valid. No, Sean is not 18 years of age. He is not legally competent to sign that. So it looked valid, but I could disaffirm that contract and go, hey man, that contract's not right because the legal competency part is defective. It's not real. So make sure you understand the difference because I'm going to try and trick one of you on the exam. Understand void never was a contract because it's missing one of the elements. As opposed to voidable, all five parts are there and it looks valid, but one of them is defective or wrong, okay? Now there is another term, a contract could be considered unenforceable. An unenforceable contract is often said in the test loves this, valid between the parties, okay? The contract that we have been using in this example, I will wash your car today for $20, yes or no, and you say, yes, I agree. That is a valid contract, but it's only valid between you and I. If I don't do it, you cannot take me to court because the judge is going to say that's unenforceable. I cannot make Raymond wash your car. All right. I cannot make him do that. Therefore, the court's going to say, sorry, we can't rule on this. We are not going to enforce this contract. So it is in unenforceable, but only between you and I. When people see your new clean car and all of a sudden I've got $20 more than I had, everybody's going to know there was a contract and it obviously was executed by both you and I because we are done with it. So it's executed. But during the process, it's unenforceable. No judge will make me wash a car. Okay. So some contracts are unenforceable. Once a contract gets formed, it has to be discharged in some manner, all right? It has to end. The most common way to end is if it is complete performance. That's what I hope. Purchase agreement gets offered, it gets accepted, it gets closed, both parties are happy, and it is completed. Now, that's the most common way, and I, that's the way I hope they all end. However, there could be a breach of a contract. A breach is where one party or the other has does not do their part of the deal. So there are several ways to do that. The first thing we need to talk about is go back to this time frame. There is a term called time is of the essence. This is something that people get confused even in the practicing world today. Time is of the essence has to do with, did I uh, get rid of that? Yeah, I certainly did. So let's redraw this. Remember a contract or an offer and then it gets accepted right here. Let's say it's accepted. And that time frame is when it's in executory status. There is a legal term called time is of the essence. Time is of the essence means this, that the person that wrote the offer is seeking 
some time frame to actually complete this agreement. In our purchase agreement, there is a blank and our buyer writes in how many days does he need to complete and get over here to fully execute it. Or let's look at it another way. The contract pins and how many days does he need to close? And the contract will say in 30 days and time is of the essence. Now, what this legal term means is that once he goes past this number, one party or the other may not be held to fulfill their portion of the contract. All right. Does it mean that he may not be liable in a court of law? So if the buyer says, I will close in 30 days and time is of the essence and we get to day 31 and he hasn't closed, the seller may say, look, I'm not selling to you anymore because I got other buyers waiting and I can't wait on you all day. I can't wait on you all year. I can't wait another 30 days or 45 days. So you told me 30, 30 has come and gone. I am no longer bound to this purchase agreement and I am not going to sell to you. You could still be liable in a court of law or the buyer could still be in a court of law uh, liable. But I am now moving on to a, another buyer. And depend, you can put any time frame in here you want. You may be put 45 days. You may put 60 days. You may put 10 days. You can put anything you want when the buyer writes the offer. That is a, believe it or not, that is a uh, negotiation point. There are a lot of times when buyers will put, I, I want to close within 45 days, and the seller counters back 30 days because, hey, he's buying a new house. He needs the money for this, so I, I need 30 days. So time is of the essence is the time frame by which the person is allowed to complete the deal. There are a lot of agents that think time is of the essence has something to do with the time frame to form the contract. No. Remember we said the buyer will write an offer and give you until 5 p.m. tomorrow to answer? That has not time is of the essence. That's just the deadline. All right. Time is of the essence is the term that is used for the time frame between the formation and the execution of that contract. For instance, I told you I will wash your car today for $20. Today is the time frame. I can't come back to you in two weeks and go, okay, I'm ready. No, time is of the essence. That is dealing with the time frame in which a person completes that contract. Now, if there's no time stipulated, a court would determine a reasonable time. But I'm here to tell you that in our contracts that were written by attorneys, we talk about it in every state, okay? There is no state purchase agreement that I've seen that does not discuss this already. But if I just said, hey, I'll wash your car for $20, yes or no, and three years later, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. The court's going to rule, well, you know, dude, um, you didn't stipulate a time frame, but three years is not a reasonable time frame. And this has to be in the purchase agreement because the seller doesn't want to wait around. Imagine if it was not in there. And the buyer said, hey, look, I'm going to buy your house, 200000 And you go, yes, that's true. And then, you know, eight months later, the buyer's like, dude, I'm still working on my credit. I'm about there. I think I can buy. No, 
you want a time frame by which you can say, okay, you told me 30, day 31, I'm moving on. 